Mother Nature has always been a force that can both terrify and mystify. For decades, man has slowly adapted ways to navigate these forces of nature. And yet there are people who purposefully put themselves in harm's way to document these monsters either from the ground or the sky. Many make it their life's mission to see what it is like at ground zero in the heart of a twister. The means to achieve this dangerous goal relied upon deploying unmanned probes that risked being missed, or catching little to no data while risking the lives of those that raced to drop them in the path and get out. But for one IMAX filmmaker, come the turn of the millennium, he too was sucked into this desire. For nearly a decade, he would hunt down every tornado he could find, not settling for just getting close, but getting the one shot that no one else had, and going down in history with it. Go forward, go forward, we're gonna drive right into it. Go, 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 I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Deploy, deploy the cannon. Born in California and the son of famed filmmaker George Casey, Sean would be brought headlong into the world of filmmaking early in his life, which would slowly begin to expose him to the elements of the world. Helping his father in films during the 90s, Sean began to branch away to do his own work, filming nature at its most extreme using his father's camera. By the beginning of the 2000s, Sean's attention would become fixated on the clash of weather titans in the battle arena of the Midwest. Armed with the same 100 pound IMAX camera his father used before, Sean would make it his life's mission to film tornadoes up close. Utilizing just about any vehicle he could get his hands on, Sean would push himself to get the ultimate shot. But with just himself and a minivan standing against the twisting titans, Year after year, he would risk his life to get ever closer and closer, but mankind has its limits to standing up against nature. It was during these early years that Sean would begin to form a five-year-long partnership with the world-renowned tornado scientist Dr. Joshua Werman. Following Josh and his group of mobile weather radar trucks across Tornado Alley, with his vehicle of choice being a pickup truck with a makeshift filming booth on the back, Sean would begin to feel his desire to get closer and closer increase until one day he thought of the perfect solution. With limited funding, risking both the future of his career and his relationship with his family, Sean would set out to gather what he could to build and finish the vehicle to achieve his mission. Well, like any good American, you have a problem, you build a tank, right? Taking an old 1997 Ford F-450 tow truck, the vehicle would be stripped down to the bare frame and chassis with only the engine bay and dashboard remaining original. Using two inch tubular steel, the roll cage and frame would be welded over the chassis to allow a smaller, more aerodynamic vehicle profile. The entire frame would then be covered in 8th inch thick steel plating, welded into place and molded to shape with a hammer. 
The window surrounding the cab would be in the form of bullet-resistant polycarbonate measuring an inch and a half thick on the windshields and half an inch across the cab. The inside would be insulated and padded down with carpet and three racing seats with a five-point safety harness holding the driver and crew. With a 7.3 liter Ford Power Stroke turbocharged diesel engine powering the heart of the beast, during the 2003 tornado season, Sean would reveal to the world the second machine of its kind. Referring to its name as the acronym that would become linked to all vehicles of its type, he would come to call it the Tornado Intercept Vehicle, or TIV for short. Often referred to as an armored tripod on wheels, the TIV's design was based entirely on its ability for Sean to get inside the tornado at close range with his IMAX camera. Using side panels that could be unlatched to allow the vehicle to film an approaching twister from the side, TIV was not originally designed for intercepting due to a number of reasons. One design element that would be part of ideas for future upgrades was the use of an airbag suspension system that would allow the vehicle to drop flush to the ground to close up wind gaps and prevent lift. But one of TIV's biggest weaknesses would be in the form of low ground clearance preventing it from tackling more challenging terrain. Unlike the tornado attack, which involved years of planning and hundreds of thousands of dollars in perfecting its design, TIV was seen as a prototype that would undergo numerous changes over its lifetime to address many of the shortcomings it suffered from. While the design itself was solid, the use of an older truck meant that the vehicle would suffer numerous breakdowns that were the result of it struggling to push through the harsh conditions it was sent through. Paired with its low ground clearance and lack of four-wheel drive, even in perfect conditions, dirt roads were often Tiv's Achilles heel, causing Sean to miss numerous intercept chances. Another problem would come in the form of one of the rare moments where Tiv's career could have ended within its first year. As while under maintenance, an electrical fire had broken out in the cabin of the vehicle catching the carpet on fire. This nearly doomed the crew, as the only access into the vehicle was via its two rear doors which required the front passenger and driver to crawl through the vehicle to exit. These downsides would push Son to further upgrade the vehicle's safety. With the addition of a forward passenger door to allow for direct access for the forward crew, and two roof hatches to allow for observation and escape. But undeniably, what would become one of the most significant changes to the vehicle, and something that only two other vehicles would include, was the addition of a brand new military-style rotating turret at the heart of the vehicle. Added to the vehicle prior to its 2004 season, the turret's purpose was to allow Sean to film in full 360-degree view, regardless of what direction Tiv was pointed at or traveling in. While storm chasing had captured his mind early on, during the making of the film Forces of Nature, while working for his father, Sean would develop a partnership with the famed tornado researcher, Dr. Joshua Werman. Serving as part of the production, Sean would eventually talk to Josh about his goal and the idea of armoring a vehicle that could survive going inside the storm. Upon completion, Tib would see action for the first time during the active 2003 tornado season, with its most achieving moments being chasing down and filming the various stages of the Manchester, South Dakota F4 tornado. At the time, TIV was designed only to get close to a tornado while filming broadside. Sit and wait as the tornado approaches, then quickly escape before being directly impacted. 
Though the Manchester tornado would have been a force far too powerful for any intercept vehicle to safely go into, the chase presented numerous issues that the vehicle had. During the 2004 season, TIV would be reconfigured to allow direct intercepting, something that gave Dr. Werman an opportunity that he didn't have before. Under the contract, the two men formed an alliance. Josh would give Sean guidance to plant him in the path of a tornado that he could survive, and in return, Sean would have the TIV equipped with an instrument mask to allow Josh to collect data from inside a tornado at ground level, where even his radars couldn't see. With radar guiding him and a means to film everywhere, the question of just what TIV could handle was something that made many wonder and worry. Both men believed that the vehicle could withstand a wind threshold between 140 and 160 miles per hour. Anything higher was felt to be far too risky. In the advent of the vehicle rolling over, becoming ripped apart, or in the worst case scenario, becoming airborne. Their mission would eventually garner the attention of different people. One of the first being National Geographic, which followed the team during their 2005 season. Initially, the team would find some success at getting within a weak, rain-wrapped tornado early in the season. Though despite conditions being safe for the vehicle, darkness and faulty equipment led to Sean not being able to film and no data collected for Josh. The rest of the season would see the team struggling to find any kind of intercept chances. Misplays on storms and tornadoes refusing to form, even during a rare double event when two tornadoes were on the ground at the same time, ended with Tiv having to call off the chase when roads became impassable from debris. But near the end of the season, one tornado over fields and country roads would finally present them with their opportunity. The chase team would find themselves in the middle of western Texas after a season that, for Tiv, had bared little fruit for Sean's IMAX mission. With operations set to conclude soon, and Sean needing to return to California for personal matters, time was quickly running out. As part of a four-day tornado outbreak that spanned from Kansas to Texas, on the fourth day of the event, 14 tornadoes would spawn down from the sky, with 11 being in Texas itself. Though all weak in nature, one that traveled in a very strange southwestern direction in Kent County to the west of Jayton, Texas, would give the team a perfect chance. With the tornado touching down around 6.17 p.m., Josh would direct Tiv west down Road 1228. Approaching from nearly head-on, Tiv would hold its ground as the nearly invisible funnel approached them down the road. Taking a direct hit from the eye of the funnel, with instruments recording wind speeds over 100 miles per hour, 
It would mark the first true intercept that Sean's creation would have survived. Though beautiful in its form and providing Josh with a once impossible data set, it wasn't the end all be all of tornado shots that Sean would need to complete his film. And so, after tinkering over the off season, Sean, Tiv, and the Dows would be back on the road for the 2006 season, hoping for better luck. This time, joined by a filming crew from the Discovery Channel to document their travels for national television. With the 2005 season not producing as hoped, but with the fall months becoming active, 2006 would start off more active than usual with back-to-back -back weeks of tornado activity through March and April. Unfortunately for the TIV, their season would start and end with disastrous results that threatened to put an end to the team's mission. Though there was hope. With funding provided by Discovery, the team were able to press on through the 2007 season with slightly better results that would yield an additional three intercepts under its belt two near the end of the season by intercepting the same tornado. Josh, what do you think about uh, Tiv's location? Uh, it's crossing the road now, Tiv. Okay, now, now, can you go forward now? Go yep. forward, go forward. We're gonna drive right into it. Go, 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 go. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. In 2008 would see the TIV take a step back from active frontline duty and serve as a secondary unit for most of the season until returning in May to finish out the season, intercepting some of the strongest tornadoes of its career, but once again, not giving Sean the shot. But by 2009, the TIV would begin to show its age as the vehicle would be held together by patchwork. During the month of May, Joshua Werman and his fleet of radar trucks were called on to participate in the tornado research project Vortex 2, meaning Sean no longer had the safety net that mobile radars had given him in the past. If Sean wanted to intercept, he would have to play a dangerous game of risk, following his instinct and faith in what information he could get his hands on. Without the use of the Dow trucks, Sean and Tib would begin to run a more solo team while chasing for most of the season. Though chasing down some storms, Tib's last solo chase would come to its end in the form of going nose first into a muddy ditch. Though it would still be on the road during both the 2009 and 2010 chase seasons, acting as a secondary vehicle in case of breakdowns, afterward, Tiv would eventually be left to rot away and be dumped behind a barn in central Kansas to rust away in peace.
But this was not where Tiff's story ends. As part of a kind of scavenger hunt, Sean Casey would slowly leak out clues regarding the tank's resting place. A single photo released by Sean would be one of the hints for hunters to start looking everywhere they could. The ultimate prize upon its discovery? A no-strings-attached agreement for the lucky winner to claim full ownership of the vehicle. And in 2019, the announcement came that the hunt was over and would reveal to everyone Tiv's new owner, Robert Clayton. Per his rules, I the first one to find it got to keep it. I was like, per his rules, I own Tiv now. A year later, he and his group would begin to mobilize the Tiv to be taken north to Hayes, Kansas, where within a repair shop, the Tiv would be reborn. Planned to be rebuilt as a fast deploy interceptor, Tiv-1 would receive refreshed armor, with the engine being rebuilt to achieve greater speeds than before. Gone were both its grey livery and claws, and in its place, a black coat of paint with fast deploying spikes. Though since its big move, not much has been done to the vehicle aside from minor cosmetic work such as the removal of the frosted windows. With the shortage of proper parts, Robert has stated he wishes for the vehicle to be ready to chase in the 2023 tornado season, though in heavy debate on whether or not to equip Tiv with a spike system, seen on its successor, that would require a longer deployment time. Until then, the vehicle sits in wait for its time to return in Tornado Alley. <laughs>